as the watchmen and the watchwomen of God. Amen. Isaiah 62 and verse 1. He says, For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and, sal and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. In chapter 62, verse 6 to 7, further down, it says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Holy Ye peace. that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God for, amen, book of Isaiah. Amen. Lots of references there to um, the watchmen in that chapter. And I wanted to just encourage our hearts this morning um, about the sake of Zion, for Zion's sake. Um, again, and you may have heard me say something similar previously, but we can personalize the salvation walk sometimes a little too much. When I say personalize it, I mean that we can make everything about us as an individual, you know, and, and that's not a healthy place to be. Um, Zion's sake is bigger than our sake, you know. Zion's agenda and God's agenda for the church is bigger than any personal agenda that we might have. And I believe that those of us who are here today in prayer are not here, you know, just for our own sake, but I believe that we understand that there's a bigger reason. You know, we understand that Zion um, needs prayer. It needs protection. It needs watching over. I believe we're here because God has put a burden on some of us. And so Isaiah carried this burden um, prophetically, he carried, you'll see in different chapters, he'll speak about the burden of the word. I mean, he carried the, the burden for, for the things of God. And this is what happens to prophetic people. Um, the Lord finds a way to put on their hearts and upon their spirit the, the desires that he has for his people. And it can be very frustrating at times because people with prophetic sight can see sometimes in ways that other people don't see things that need to be done, things that aren't right, um, things that need to be fixed. And so Isaiah is saying, you know, for the sake of Zion, I will not hold my peace. And we can be tempted so many times to, to stay quiet. You can be one of those who said, well, I've spoken before and I'm not going to speak again, or it's been many years now. I keep telling, you know, my leaders, I keep saying this and I'm tired. I'm going to pack up, you know, and fold my arms and, and just go away. But you need to recognize that God has put you in the house of God for a reason. He's given you the burden for his work for a reason. It's not to make you miserable. It's to make you a, a helper. And so Zion's sake is a bit bigger than yours. He says, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. You know, I need some rest <laughs> physically. But um, he's, Isaiah is saying, look, I'm going to put everything that I have physically, vocally, into making sure that the church of God doesn't fall over, that Zion doesn't perish. I need to release the word of the Lord for the health of God's people. And he says, until righteousness, the righteousness thereof goes forth as brightness. Praise the Lord. So um, the, the proverb speaks about the path of the just as a shining light. He says, you know, the, the righteousness of God's people mustn't be dim. In fact, Jesus put it this way. He says that the righteousness... Of, of God's people must exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. And so he's encouraging us that, you know, righteousness has to go beyond what people see physically with the eye. The Pharisees were very much men pleasers. They did things for what the Bible called eye service. They'd come out in the street wearing their robes so they could appear to be holy before people. When they're fasting, they disfigure their faces so people can, can see that they must be on fasting. All these things. For people, to be, for people to see what you're doing. The Lord says, if you do things for men's eyes, then once they see you, you'll have all the reward that you're ever going to get. But when you do things, you know, for, in secretly and for God's sake, you get an open reward. He says that therefore, you know, we must exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. Turning up to church for a lot, a lot of folks, a lot of the time, was the measure of your righteousness. And I believe that we should go to church. But turning up on time, and I believe we should be on time, you know, became the measure of righteousness. And so we, we, we don't want to use 
things that are good like this in the natural as a yardstick for true righteousness. You know, being right in the sight of God is doing, doing the right thing when nobody's looking. It's being willing to pray when there's not a prayer meeting called. It's being willing to fast when nobody's asked you to fast. You know, it's helping the poor and the needy. It's seeing that there's a need to be met and meeting it because we can. You know, the Bible says that we, if we withhold anything um, when we have, it is in our power to, to give it, then it becomes a sin to us. You know, the Lord even said through James and, and in the Proverbs too, if a man comes to you for something and you can give him today, don't tell him to come back tomorrow. All these little things uh, amount to, to righteousness, doing the right thing before God. So the church in, in many cases, and we have seen in this time of lockdown, of lockdown um, we've been able to pick apart many of the problems that the church has. And it's not for us just to complain. Uh, we take these things in prayer. And as I keep warning about Monday's Bible study coming up, we have to find a way to also verbalize um, to, to leadership. We have to find a way to speak truth to power, as they say, um, that, that Zion will not be hindered. Some people are scared of getting thrown out of their organization. Some people are scared of losing their position within their organization. And so because the organization is so rigid and stuck, um, they, don't, they won't open their mouth because they don't want to be at risk of losing any favor with leadership or being in trouble with the board. There comes a time where what you've seen is so gross and grotesque that you have to open your mouth and you have to find a way to do that. That is respectful. Um, there comes a time where you become a part of the problem. If you don't speak up for Zion's sake, I'll not hold my peace. Zion is not your organization. Zion is not whatever men built. Zion is actually a spiritual place. It's a, it's a place where God has, um, it's a, a mountain for the redeemed. It's really a spiritual location. So it's about the saved people. It's about the people who have been delivered, the people who have accepted Christ and have come into relationship with him and are having spiritual victory. People who have in relationship with God is the Zion of God. It's the called out one. So it's not the organization. The organization is a framework that helps us to have good structure and be proactive in, in um, outreach and evangelism. And, you know, we can, we can funnel our finances in a way that can make us more effective. I'm not saying we should not be organized, but we need to understand that when, when we are seeing um, egregious um, behaviors that are opposite to God's purpose and God's word, the watchmen have to open their mouth. Watchmen have to say something. You don't carry that burden in vain. God has given the burden to depress you. You've been given the burden to open your mouth and to say something, regardless of the consequences, in spite of what men might say. Most of these prophets were murdered. Jesus asked them, which of them didn't you kill? <laughs> these men were sent to help the church. They were sent to help Israel and they kill every one of them. And so the, the life of the prophet is not always an easy one. And so we have to pray for specific prayers for people who carry the burden of God's word. He says the the watchmen upon thy walls, he set them, O Jerusalem, and they shall never hold their peace, day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. You know, that encouragement goes back to don't keep silent. Those of you who have that position, don't keep silent. The day and night, you know, I believe that's not just about speaking and warning. I believe that's also about prayer. I believe we're watching over God's people in prayer. We're seeing breaches and we're tackling breaches in the spirit. We're seeing spiritual, um, what should we call it? Encroachment upon the church, invasions. We've seen when they, things have crossed the border. We see when people start changing the way they talk or their conversation or their, uh, the way they start speaking about scripture or what they're starting to allow to come in the church. We can see, some of us can see when we gave the devil an inch. If you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. All right, so some of us are seeing the first infractions of the enemy. You need to be reactive in the spirit. You need to pray earnestly. Sometimes you, you and I need to give up food to deal with the one thing that we saw happen this Sunday. Yes, yeah, so sometimes we see something, saints, and you lose your appetite. Please have mercy on your husband. Have mercy on your wife. It's a Sunday. But sometimes God says, I need you just to go home and fast right, right away. You didn't plan this fast, you know, but your spirit is so sick that you lose your appetite. When you lose your appetite for things happening in the church of God, put away your food and pray. Yeah. Don't, don't wait for something to be organized. 
please beg your partner for consent if you need to just tell them there's a burden on me i need to go into f to fasting look i i'm a i'm a person who's been married for many years and you know my wife should get used to me by now uh, but still it can be you know we we know that we must have uh, consent with our partners but sometimes you need to sell, tell your partner god just put some on me i need you to have mercy on me i need to go into fasting right now because we have seen a breach in the spirit watch men watch men watch men don't hold your peace you have to put your body on the line sometimes for god's house to to succeed and so just a few points for prayer we want the church to be righteous in all its dealings the church shouldn't be a place that cut corners we shouldn't be a place um, that's begging for money. We shouldn't be a place that would take any kind of money. You know, the church must have some integrity about itself. The church must be a place of justice where people can come and have their problems dealt with. They can come with their family feuds and get, get good counsel and things be settled. You know, the church of God must be the apex of righteousness, the height of righteousness in the land. We want to pray for the watchmen I've put here for their consistency. So, the faithfulness in, in sharing what God has told them to share. Because saints, when you are prophetic, you don't always have nice words to give. And people won't naturally gravitate to liking you when you have prophetic ministry. It's not always God is going to bless you. I see God going to provide for you. Um, some of us are not fortunate to be those kinds of prophets. We have warning ministries. We have ministries um, of discerning of spirits. right? And so this isn't all about fluffy happy prophet encouragement building up it doesn't always come like that so we have to be consistent because like the prophets we don't always want to say it you know john john they didn't want to say what god wanted him to say we can be reluctant sometimes even jeremiah said i said i weren't going to say anything but he couldn't because it was just burning inside of him so we want to pray for prophets to be consistent and to be faithful and we want to pray for their love because you know if you're a prophet and you you see all the things that are going on that are bad if you're not careful you will you will fall out of love with god's people and you don't want to be there you become a pain to the church if you fall out of love with god's people and then you start speaking from a place of misery and you start speaking from a place of um just pain and god needs the prophet to stay in love with the people right he, he needs that the cause of zion is the cause of your heart that the growth and the beauty of God's people is at the core of your spirit, that you don't speak out of hatred, you don't speak out of pride, but you speak out of love for God's people. You speak the truth in love. And you have to pray for the sanity of the prophet. The prophet can feel like he's losing his mind. The enemy will attack prophets uh, like, I don't know what to say, so strong, so heavy, because when you're discerning uh, the spirits and when you're discerning the pathway of the enemy and, and the, the workings of the spirit of, of wickedness um, then you become a target the devil wants to take out the watchman if he wants to, to get into Zion you take down the watchman because they're on the wall and they're standing if the man on the wall can't sound if he's compromised then he cannot he cannot sound the alarm and so we want to pray for them to keep their mind because prophets are under attack Right? Prophets like Nathan have to speak truth to, to people like David. Who's the most important person in that equation? Well, it would appear to be the king because he's the king. But man, where would the king be without the prophet to speak the word, to bring him down, to keep him in alignment with God? So when you have big duties and, and big assignments to speak to people and to speak to churches and to speak to leaders, you need a grace on your life that keeps you in your right mind because some people will tell you who do you think you are to speak to people like that. And then for their wisdom, and again, I'll be touching on this on Monday, much about this ministry again, the wisdom of the prophet to speak right words at the right time in the right spirit. Amen. This might be you this morning. I pray that you receive um, encouragement and grace. You can't stop doing the work because it's difficult. We can't stop doing the work because it's unpopular. We have not been called to be men pleasers. We have really been called to do the work of the Lord. So we're going to pray for our pastors as we do on Sundays. And pray for our leaders that they will you know incline their hearts to hear the word of the lord that they'll be humble to receive god's word amen i wish that men of god would listen to god directly but it just doesn't always happen and so you and i have a job to do to really speak the word of god and to speak it without favor and without fear and to do it also in love god bless you <laughs>